So let's talk about pairwise matches. In rows one and two of this table, these rows are considered pairwise matches because they both have the values blue and red in, the, in columns one and two. So we're not interested in the order of the columns. What we'd like to do is clean up these rows so that the values match. One way of doing that is like this, where we've put blue and red in both rows. Another way might be like this, with red and blue. But of course we have to just choose a way. So in this example, um, and bearing in mind the fact that we may have situations where there are many, many rows with lots of different combinations and potentially many columns to consider in such matches, what we're gonna use is a rule where we just select the first row in each match and use that as the row to fill the other rows. So the first record in a pairwise match is the golden record. Let's look at a more complex example. Here we're using three columns and each of these three rows have the values blue, red and yellow in them when not considering order. And according to the rule we just determined, that would end up looking like this because we are replacing with the first row in the match. I've imported the simple example into Power Query in Excel. The way I'm going to do this is paste steps into the advanced editor and then talk about each step rather than making you wait for me type to type and make mistakes as I go. So these are the first steps. And what we've got here, first of all, is this list, comparison columns. Now that enables us to set as many columns or as few columns as we want to use in the comparison. This is important rather than uh, always assuming that it's going to be uh, a couple of selected columns and embedding those values throughout the, the query. So for a complex example, this list can be all of the columns in the table, or it can be just two or three or whatever we want. This step is adding a column to the table which simply contains the values from the record in the source table. So each one of these is a record, one, two, three, four, and it will have three fields, ID, column one, and column two. So this will add a column which contains the record with the three fields in it. Lastly, add sorted comparison values is adding another column which is going to be called sorted comparison values. And what that's doing is selecting from the current record only the comparison columns, in this case, column one and column two, so it's not including the ID column. That creates a record with just two columns in it. That record is then passed into record.field values, and field values extracts the values in those fields from that record. So in the case of record one, it's the values blue and red. And in the case of record two, it's the values red and blue. And it returns a list. We then use list.sort to sort that list, with the net result being that the list in row one is blue, red, and the list in row two, because it's sorted, is also blue, red. Let me show you what it looks like. So there's the record, the original record. We're gonna need that later. And you can see that it contains the fields from the original record. And here's the sorted list of the comparison values. Blue and red on the first row. Blue and red on the second row. Yellow, uh, blue and yellow on the third row because it's sorted and red and yellow on the fourth row. Now that we've got that list of sorted values, we can group the matched records together. So of course in Power Query we use table.group to do that, and this step golden record by group is doing exactly that. It is adding a column called replacement record and that replacement record is going to contain the first record within each group where the group is defined by the unique values in the sorted comparison values column, which remember is the list 
of sorted values. And on rows one and two, it contains blue and red. This step here is then taking that first record and putting it back into the main table. So if you remember the last time I showed you what's on the screen here, this is actually the result of this add sorted comparison value step. So we are adding a column to the add sorted comparison value step called replacement record. And replacement record is selecting from the table created in the golden record by group step, which is this step here. And it wants to select the record where the sorted comparison values column is equal to the same column on the current row of the main table. So that's what this syntax does. This is essentially performing the match between the two tables. And at the end, we are just extracting the replacement record column to place it into this main table. So let's have a look at that. The golden record by group step has grouped on sorted comparison values. The first one is blue red, which represents rows one and two in the main data. And the record that it has selected is the first record, which is row one, which is blue and red. And that's according to the rule that we set at the beginning of the video. The add replacement record is then grabbing that golden record and placing it into the main table. So on row one, the golden record or replacement record is blue red. And on row two, it's blue red. And on row three, it's yellow blue. And on row four, it's yellow red. I've added a few more steps and this next step is called merge record with replacement record. And here we're adding a new column called new record. And new record is merging the record column that we added way at the beginning, this one here, which contains the original values from the source data. And the replacement record, which we added in the previous step, remember that contains the new values that we want to use for that row. When we merge two records with an ampersand like this, any values for fields in the right hand record, which match fields in the left hand record are used to overwrite the values in the left hand record. So because in both records, we have columns one and two, we are overwriting the values in the left record, which is the original data with the new values that we want to use from the right record for columns one and two. So this is a record merge and that creates a new column called new record. And finally, the result is just using that new column to create a table. So let's look at it. So this is the merge step where we are merging the original record which on row one contains one blue red and on row two contains two red blue with the replacement record which on row one contains blue red for columns one and two and on row two contains blue red for columns one and two so we are going to merge this with this and it produces this which on row one is one blue red and on row two is two blue red which is the desired result the Final step is just taking that new record and creating a table from it. So this is actually the end result that we needed. We created a query that will fix the pairwise matches in this one table for those two columns. That's not much use outside this example. So let's create a function out of it. It will have two parameters, data as table, comparison columns as list, and it will return a table. We can comment those out and replace the word source here with the word data and we're done. That creates a function that will do what we want called nwise match. And this is an example of it in action. We're just pulling the data in from Excel as before 
defining the columns that have the comparisons and then using the function to create the result. You can see here that it has fixed the data in the way we expected. Just to show you that this does indeed work with more than two columns, here's the three column example from the slides at the beginning. Remember the first three rows should are matches to each other. So the source is from Excel, the comparison columns is just the, th the three, column one, column two, and column three. And then the result is using the function with those two arguments to create cleaned data in each of the three columns. Next, I wanna talk about this rule that we created at the beginning where we take the first record in a group and define that as the golden record. That's fine for this demo, but that might not necessarily be uh, useful for every situation. So what we can do is parameterize that. And I'm gonna call it replacement function as a parameter to this function so that instead of table.first, I put replacement function here. Now, all I require is that replacement function is some function, any function, that takes a table and returns a single row, a single record in, in, in essence. So I've put replacement function as a parameter and then I'm using it in this group, golden record by group step instead of table.first. Now, doing so will break these two examples on the side here, but that's fine. All we need to do is put in table.first like that, and we get the exact same results as we got before. Blue, red, blue, red. And of course, if I want, I can use table.last, and that will give me red, blue, red, blue. So what I've done is I've parameterized the selection of the record that is used to clean the data. Make sense? Remember, table.first is what we used before. So it's blue, red, yellow. If I change it to table.last, it will be whatever the last occurrence was. Yellow, blue, red. And of course, that function can be really anything. It can be a custom function as long as it accepts a table and returns a single record from that table. And that is the end of the video.